Hello, everybody. Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. Welcome back to Leisure Suit Larry 2. So, uh, things have taken a turn for the, um, for the crappy. We're off the boat, so we don't have to worry about being squashed by a very large woman. But now, we are stuck in a lifeboat going God knows where, and we've really got to hope and pray to whoever you believe that we have everything that we need from the previous ones. And, oh my God, look at the size of Larry's hands. So yeah, every, pretty much everything you've gathered up until this point is to make sure that you survive this moment. It's like, boy, that sun sure is hot. It's a good thing you use that sunscreen to block the ultraviolets. The sun out here is hot enough to fry an egg. There you go. You get it ranked up to dork for that. Mm, you think the sun must be even hotter today. Oh, and now my hair is on fire. And there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, the tropical sun has turned you a balded brain into an omelet cooked until sunny side soft, Larry. Hmm. Okay, well, I thought... See, this is why you have the wig. It protects your head. Better luck next cruise. Okay, fine. Let's just... Yeah, I just loaded up another game, and you can't do anything right now. Like, even if you go to your inventory, and it's like, oh, look, there's the wig. We should use it. You can't. I guess there's only one time you can do it, and that's why this scene is so flipping long. I was always wondering why it takes so long for you to float from the boat to the ocean, but this is because you can now put on wig. And I think there's one other thing you're supposed to do. We already put on the sunscreen. Uh, I think that's all we need to do. We'll find out in a minute. All right, Larry, looking good, especially with your really kicky, like, little baby blue nail polish. Good choice. Really brings out the eyes and the hair, which matches the boat. All right, here we are, day five. The sun's even hotter today. It's a good thing you wore that silly wig. The sun out here is hot enough to fry your brains. Good, and it looks like we stayed at a rank low life. Hmm. Your thirst becomes more and more intense with each passing day. Visions of pre-classic Coke float before your eyes. You extract the grotesque gulp from your inside pocket and are surprised to discover that it has retained its entire 32-gallon capacity. You now have enough fluid to last you for weeks, but you're worried about your blood sugar level. Yes, up to novice. Excellent. Your hunger grows intense with the passing of days. Visions of Danny's pizza float before your eyes. It's a good thing you brought that spinach dip along. Oh, oh no! Oh, unfortunately for you, the mayonnaise in the, has spoiled in the hot tropical sun. That's douche move, game. Am I dead? Yeah, I'm dead. All right, so wear wig and uh, throw dip. There we go, a good idea. You toss the spinach dip as far over the ocean as you can, which is really all that not the far. So what am I gonna do for food now? I have the fruit in my pocket, I think, unless my banana exploded during that, uh, what I imagine was me peeing the pool. Nope, I do, I do have the fruit, we're good. So hopefully that'll be enough to keep me alive. Find out in a minute, folks. So curiously, you can probably just not pick up the dip, but you get points for getting it. Uh, it's, it's really, uh, yeah, the game is just out to get you at that point. But then you get points for throwing it away, so, hey! <laughs> Neither. You cleverly open the sewing kit you stole from the mother's nightstand, extract a safety pin and thread. You patiently fish for hours, but eventually catch your limit. Your limit for raw fish is quite low, yeah, I imagine, but you have the fruit. Eat that! It doesn't matter. Whatever. Alright, please tell me that's the last of my trials. Good. During a particularly rough storm late in the tenth night at sea, your lifeboat crashes on a coral reef and shatters to bits. You grab the largest piece of wood you can, hold on tight, and survive the storm. The dawn finds you crashing through an offshore reef, tumbling through the surf to a gorgeous beach. We couldn't animate that, so take our word for it. Hey, Larry, that's you out there in the surf. Land ho! You cry. Uh, can I move? Nope, it's automatic. Bringing my shamili butt over to the beach. Blah, 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 blah. Made it. Oh, my suit's a mess. Oh, good. Here comes someone to help you. Oh. Asshole. 
Congratulations there, right? You have survived weeks adrift on the high seas with nothing but your courage, perseverance, and a few humble provisions. Endured tropical storms, vicious winds, and high seas, and just a tiny lifeboat. Prevailed over the surf, offshore barrier reach, and razor sharp coral. Escaped the dangerous mother, avoided the vicious KGB and tempting enticements of the evil Dr. No Nookie's henchet hordes, and withstood that creep's audacious humor. Oh, and you're still good as new, but boy, your suit is a mess. There we go. There we go. Good as new. Don't you just love good polyester? But now you wonder, where am I? And what possession survived your disastrous journey? Good question. What do we have left? I guess we didn't need the fruit after all. Wonder why we picked it up. Did I miss something? Whatever. We got our bikini top. Our onk lunk thankfully made it, which has the secrets of holding the free world, keeping the free world free. Passport. Good. And my wad of dough, which is a little bit more soggy than I would like. You're on a beach of a beautiful resort hotel, a tropical paradise for the rich and famous. In the distance, you see people enjoying water sports of all kinds. Well, let's go there. Hmm... Okay, this looks like a maze. Larry? This resort has lovely landscaping, but it's so dense you can't find anything. You wander about aimlessly, searching in a break in the vegetation to return you to civilization. Let's hope I did not make a permanent mistake. Larry? Well, at least I can kill one of these cockatiels for food. Or that parrot. I think I remember this. Every time you enter the jungle area, you come out in a different place, and you have to watch this animation go for about... about two minutes solid. Ugh, fast forwarding. Finally, at last, you find an exit. But where does it lead? Why, you found a lovely restaurant. Well, lovely. Hmm. Look. Expensive linen, crystal, and silver weigh down the tables. An appetizer buffet fills one corner. Hmm. Well, I'll take it. I got lots of money. Um, excuse me, sir. I was wondering if I might get a bite to eat. The maitre d' slowly diverts his gaze towards you. Your name, please? Uh, my name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Well, I suppose I could try to find a place for you on our busy schedule. And just have a seat there in the chair while I prepare a table for you. No, I will stand here. Except nothing happens if you do. Why, Mr. and Mrs. Rage, what a pleasure to see you. Of course, I have a table for you. Yeah, and there were, please walk this way. Well, that was certainly rude. You were here before them. You feel yourself becoming perturbed. You can see where this is going. There are another four empty tables. Yeah, you know exactly what's happening. Why, Mr. and Mrs. Famous? Why, Mr. and Mrs. Gates? Why, Mr. Leach? Why, Mr. and Mrs. Williams? All right, sir. I'll show you to your table now. Sure, now that there are no tables left. Please, walk this way. If you think to yourself, if I walk that way, I'd use talcum powder. Oh, he's mincing. Oh, boy. Please set up a table for Mr. Laffer. Be seated, Mr. Lafayette. Please feel free to help yourself for an appetizer bow. And, oh yes, I almost forgot. Sure you can! <laughs> I forgot about that. Choice location, Larry. That's right, we gotta pick a new uh, trite phrase. Alright, well, before we sit down, let's go actually explore this little app bar they have going on over here. The maitre d' is nowhere to be seen. These guys, I don't think, will actually ever be served anything, which is just fine by me. Let them rot in hell. 
Actually, wait, which ones were Roberta Williams? Was it these guys? No, didn't recognize them. They are just nameless pawns. Why, look, there's a knife laying next to the cheese plate. Well, uh, they're showing me that for a reason. Take knife. The matron aide did say to help yourself to the buffet, but this is rather borderline behavior, Larry. Oh, all right. Well, you surreptitiously slip the slicer from the serving surface and sequester it in your suit. Looks like the knife is still there, but whatever. Can I actually take some cheese? You glom up a cracker full of brie and slip it into your mouth. You've never liked brie. Take salad? Nope. Do not ever say salad to me ever, ever, ever. Still, the only thing you've had to eat the entire time except for raw fish, and it's like, ugh, brie. There we go. Let's see. What's on my tray? Look. Food. Why, look, your table conveniently arrived with food attached. All right, well, eat it. Um, yummy. Uh, do, okay. Bad idea, Larry. Uh-oh, no. What, 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 what? For a while, you're afraid you're going to die. Then you're afraid you are not going to die. What? Your last thoughts are maybe was something I... Oh, no. The Major D. You son of a bitch. Oh, God, I haven't saved in so long. <laughs> oh, no. Ugh. I'm going to make you watch me do that all over again. No, no, I won't do that. Wind sail. What are the odds it's going to say, don't ever say wind sail to me again? Yep. Yeah. Well, 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 have fun out there during riding whatever that is. It's not a wind sail. So before we go, it looks like we could actually go over here, but obvious. Oh, look. Who could these mysterious people be in these beautiful banana hats, sunglasses, and gray trench coats? I'm sure it'll be fine. I have him! Because you, you capitalist bourgeois listy of the evil empire! Shouts the KGB isn't looking ill at ease in his ill-fitted trench coat and oversized speedo. Hmm, the KGB have recognized you, captured you, and will now take you to their headquarters for questioning. We've all seen that and other fun stuff. All right, so we have to disguise ourselves from to get from here to here, which I guess is where the hotel is, maybe. I'm also curious, I'm looking up here, what is this? Is this like a security camera or something? Look, tree. Palm trees sway overhead while tropical succulents suck away in the bushes. Mm, but what is that up there, camera? Nope. Well, it looks like a camera to me. Maybe it's a bird, or maybe it's just this gray... I don't know. Anyway, we can't go that way. Ooh, parasailing! I did that once. Twice. Three times a Larry. There we go. This looks more like it. Well, we found the nude beach. Isn't polyester comfortable? Was that naked woman talking to you? Why would she say... Well, whatever. Look. Say, these people have no clothes on. What kind of place is this anyway? Look, woman. Suddenly, you start to perspire. Hello there. Uh, isn't polyester comfortable? Yes. Yes, it is. The hell you say? Talk, woman. Hiya, baby, you tell her. My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Well, hello yourself, big boy, says the totally naked woman lying on the rock. Aren't you the overdressed one? Say, since you're all dressed and I was just thinking of leaving, why don't we go to my place together? I know a wonderful spot near there where we can be alone. Come on, Larry. Just follow me. Um, I can't help but notice you're not mo uh, There you go. Well, Tiger, what are you waiting for? Obvious trap saving. But okay, here I come. Wait for Daddy. You quickly seduce the beautiful naked woman, then head to the resort parking lot where she leaves on her personal helicopter. Uh, I'll chop her right across the South Pacific, followed by, yeah, we know the rest. Oh, what the hell? Sorry, Larry, you deserve this. All right, we'll just let her go her own way. Uh, don't think there's much else we can do here. Look at the many penises. Don't you ever say penises to me again. All right, fine. Look. Pubes. Didn't like that either. No, it doesn't know the word dongs. It's just as it appears. There's only one, apparently. Well, that should be long enough. Nothing to see here. Can't go that way. All right, well, down's the only way we can go. 
This rock here looks kind of like a leg. Maybe it looks like someone's kind of curled up in the fetal position here. Maybe. Probably not. Eh, whatever. Bye. Fast forward. God, so much of this game is just waiting. Oh, thank God we're done. Okay, I got the knife. I remembered to save this time. Yeah, let's see where else we end up. Fast forward. Oh, thank God, it took forever. So we found an empty guest room, apparently. Uh, don't even feel like, uh, oh, hi. Um, look, this room is considerably larger than your stateroom on board the cruise ship and has a picture window overlooking the beach. Uh, there's a restroom, plus a dressing area near the picture window. There's a book of complimentary matches. Ooh, I guess I need those. Laying on the nightstand near the bed. Uh, look, woman. Oh, well, hi. You are, you're braided. You find native women sexy. Then again, you find any women sexy. All right, well, talk woman. Let's see if we can say hello. Where are we? Hello, my little native beauty. <laughs> my name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Hello, sir. I would like to help you in any way I can. Okay. Oh, good morning, sir. I'm your customer service representative in charge of horizontal surface consistency and custodial maintenance. I trust you are finding everything satisfactory. She says she's the maid. Okay. All right. Ask for help. The hell you say? Talk girl. Um. Uh, okay, says the native maid coyly. Goodbye, King Graham of Daventry. Oh, no. I had a feeling I was supposed to do something with her. Um, be right back. All right, here we are again. So let's firstly get the matches. Matched? Okay, well, matches. That works too. Slip a book of matches into your pocket. Done. Gee, Larry, at least you found your match. Thanks. There we go. I can seduce her. Oh, sir, she smiles demurely. I just so love Americano men. They are so, how you say, financial. Oh, well, okay, well, come on, big boy, what are you waiting for? Don't you want to goodbye, King Graham of Daventry? What's that even mean? Okay, I have a feeling she's KGB, but here we go. Gee, you tell her, is this room service or what? All right, got it. Sweet. There we go, game over. I guess everything's going to end up well in the end. Larry found his true love. Or, oh, okay, well, it was, mm -hmm. while you're indisposed, through the doorway marches the maid's older brother, Carlos. Thanks to U.S. foreign aid, Carlos has many extra bullets that he enjoys firing for amusement. This is not good. Sista Maria, how many times I gotta tell you, lay off the white meat. Oh, hi. That's your gun. Bad choice, Larry. Remember, there's no such thing as a free lunch. But we could... In love and stuff, this could be the beginning of something wonderful. All right, well, she wasn't a KGB agent, that was good, I guess. So, uh, get matches. All right, check. So now I just have to wait for her to come and go, I suppose. Ha 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 ha, not in that way. Anyway, so there's a dressing area, and we need to be disguised, so maybe I can put on that bikini. Why would I want to wear half a bikini? Uh,. Good call. D don't I have... Oh, is it only a bikini top I have? It is. Oh. So I need a bikini bottom. Interesting. What's in here? A bowl filled with complimentary soap near the sink. Okay, get soap. Got it. You grab the bowl full of tiny bars of soap and dump them into your pockets thinking, When I get home, I can carefully wet these and glue them all together to make one really regular size bar. What a great deal. You have always been terminally cheap. All right, well, soap for me, yay. You sink? You'd like to wash your hands of this whole affair. We sit with a random semicolon at the end. All right, nothing else in here. Let's see where else we can end up. To the forest of boredom. <sighs> that was legitimate. Well, 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 look where we landed. Uh, let's see. Don't our barbershops look the same? Good day, mister, says the barber. Can I help you? Oh, let's see. Talk man. I got no time for ticky-talky, responds the barber. 
All right, well, fine. I guess sitting down in a barber chair implies haircut. Is there anything you can do for my receding hairline? Uh, but of course, mister, I got just the what you need. Just have a seat in the chair, please. For you today, I got the special deal. I'm going to try some of my Oxidol. Uh, don't you mean Minoxidol, you ask? No, I don't know what that is. I'm going to rub your head with some of this liquid laundry detergent. <laughs> Too late to leave now, Larry. He's got gotcha. you. There, all is set. Now let's just give it a second to work. How ridiculous. I just let some guy I don't even know pour laundry detergent on my head. Ooh, wow, you exclaim. Not only does that stuff really work, it's fast, too. I knew you'd be delighted. Come back anytime and see me, a blondie. Why'd you call me that? No, no reason. Boop. Whoa, beautiful locks. Oh, great. Now what am I supposed to do? Have a more fun. I think it's great. Well, at least my bald spot is gone. Along with your self-respect. Goodbye, King Graham of Daventry. <laughs> I love it. Do I have to pay the guy? Pay man. Nothing worth buying. No? All right. Look. Self. Oh, that just gives you your inventory. Dorbs. Well, if I'm going to try disguising myself as a lady, I guess this is step number one. I have long flowing hair. Maybe they won't recognize me now that I have like different hair. Oh, God. All right, good. Back where we started. Love it. Okay, this is probably not going to work, but, uh, well, let's just see what they say. We got you, you capitalist slime-sucking pig. We will make you the best-looking fashion model in all the USSR. How, how did you know it was me? Only in Russia do women wear leisure suits to beach. Ah, well, learned. Okay, so I can't wear my leisure suit. That's how they recognize me. Which means the only thing I could possibly wear is that bikini top, but I need a bottom, otherwise they will see my, uh, evidence. Aha! There we go, that makes perfect sense. We come back to where the lady was, and somehow she turned into a bikini bottom. Who lives in a button? Never mind. Okay, now we're back here. Now we can change. Uh, wear bikini. Okay. Boy, do you look so sweet. Yeah, look at me. All right, now, um, one thing I do remember is that you do have to uh, stuff yourself. So in order to make myself a little bit less flat-chested and more believable as a woman, there we go, I shoved all the soap I had in there. So now, look at them flopping in the breeze. World's first example of jiggle physics in a legitimate video game. It's not going to fool anybody, but okay. Oh, there's a little paddle boat out there. I never noticed that one before. Adorable. Love it. Okay. Um, I don't think this is going to be enough to fool them, but let's give it a try. Oh, no. I have him. Crap. We caught you, you vicious villain of the people, shouts the KGB agent, now growing quite hoarse. Because <laughs> the, uh, they're implying that they've caught you many times because you're meant to fail and fail and fail. How did you know it was me? Only in Russia do women have such body hair. Oh, lame. Well, now we have a whole nother set of problems on our hands as he puts alto saxophone reeds into my fingernails. So now we look like a fairly convincing lady, but now we are too full of body hair. We're not going to pass as a lady in 1980s. So I guess we'll save that little mission for next time. I guess the barber shop maybe could do like a wax job or something, or I have a knife. Maybe I can just individually shave each and every individual hair off of my legs. So that'll be our mission next time. And then I think we can move into the last few sections of the game. I think we're getting fairly close-ish. I don't even know. Looking at the score, I'm not even halfway there, but God knows who what I missed. So until then, as always, good night, jelly beans. Good night.